Hello, welcome to US News. Today I will take you to Wild Chris Kia's overtime buzzer beater sends Florida basketball to Elite Eight. New York sitting at his locker, having just scrolled through the endless stream of text messages flooding into his phone, Chris Chiesa tried to explain what will go down as one of the greatest shots in Florida basketball history. And one of the great highlights in NCAA tournament history, for that matter. After Wisconsin took a two-point lead with four seconds to go in overtime Friday night, having already hit a dramatic three-pointer to force the extra session, the Gators inbounded the ball to Chiesa with their season on the line. He had every intention of getting to the basket for a potential game-tying score, but when he glanced at the clock as he crossed midcourt he realized that wouldn't he be possible. So he let it fly. Off balance, lunging and with a prayer. It had barely finished swishing through the net before the Florida bench erupted onto the court, mobbing Chiesa and soaking in a momentous 84-83 overtime win over the Badgers at Madison Square Garden. The Gators, 27-8, now move on to an Elite Eight showdown with SEC foe South Carolina at 2.20 p.m. Sunday, with more momentum than they could have ever imagined. I still can't believe it went in comma Chiesa said afterwards. I just, I tried to get down to the other end of the court as fast as I could, and I looked up and I saw I had one second right when I crossed half court. So I knew I had another dribble and I could get a quick shot off, and it went in and I ran down the court and followed the ball and I watched it go through the net and unbelievable to see it go in like that dot said teammate Kavarius Hayes, you dream of something like this, making it this far and just like the way it happened is something out of a movie dot. It wasn't he just the best game of the 2017 NCAA tournament so far, it s one that will be replayed in highlights montages for years and decades. It s one that nobody who saw it will ever forget where they were or the image of that shot. Just a little while earlier a lunging last second three-pointer from Wisconsin as Zach Showalter looked like it might lead to the end of number four seeded Florida S season. The number eight Badgers, 27-10, had scored the final eight points of regulation in a stunning comeback over the final one minute, 30 seconds. A three-pointer from Bronson Koenig. A layup by Ethan Happ and that off-balance Showalter 3 with 2.5 seconds on the clock erased what had been a Florida lead for nearly the entire second half. Wisconsin then took a 78-73 lead in overtime as it looked like the Gators had let this one slip away. But Canyon Berry followed with a layup for Florida's first field goal of the extra session. Showalter countered with a pair of free throws and Kvon Allen scored on a layup to make it an 80-77 game with 47 seconds to play. Hat then went one of two on at the foul line, Barry drained two free throws at the other end and came through bigger still with a clutch block on a Callal Iverson layup attempt. Kiesa tied it at 81-81 on a layup before Nigel Hayes got to the line with four seconds left to put the Badgers back ahead once more. But not for long. Kiesa wanted to drive it all the way to the basket, but Wisconsin diverted his path leaving too little time as he glanced at the clock. I thought he'd get in the paint, but then I think it was Hayes if I am not mistaken kind of made him veer a little bit commagators coach Mike White said. So he pulled up a little early, I guess it happened so quick you don't even think. I may have thought, boy, that s a little bit early. I can t remember. The thing went in dot. A reporter questioned Kiesa how he could get from half court to the three point line and get a shot off in one second? I don't know, I am pretty fast comma he countered. Kiesa, Florida's backup junior point guard, came into the night as a 34.9% three-point shooter, but he s 4 for 6 so far in the NCAA tournament now.
he finished with only 8 points Friday night, but 5 came in overtime. Allen, meanwhile, poured in a career-high 35 points on 11 of 24 shooting and was set to be the hero of the evening before the wild ending. He might have been the coldest shooter in the NCAA tournament, and not in a nice-in-the-veins kind of way. For a third straight game he simply hadn't been able to find his shot while struggling through most of the first half. Until he broke out of his funk with the best stretch of his collegiate career. Allen scored 13 of Florida's final 18 points in a momentum-seizing stretch to close the first half. He didn't miss during a stretch of nine shots at one point and was a terrific storyline in his own right. Because it has hard to understate how much Allen, the Gators' leading scorer this season, had been struggling before he suddenly cooled and miss. He had shot a miserable 4 of 28 from the field this tournament before a fast break dunk late in the first half and he'd miss his next two three-pointers to fall to one of 17 from long range for the tournament. But he was not deterred. Soon a layup fell in for him and later Allen drained a three to cut the deficit to 30-28 and he was dialed in from there. Nothing changes as far as me being aggressive and just continuing the shooting, comma, Allen said afterward. And just my teammates just believing in me just to keep shooting whether I miss or hit dot. It was a terrific first leading role in what turned out to be a suspenseful, twist-filled, three-act play. And an unforgettable one at that. We re so fortunate that we came out on the winning end of that one. My goodness, comma, said White, who as a player at Olay Miss was on the losing end of a buzzer-beating game winner by Valparaiso S. Bryce Drew. It does negate at a little bit the Valpo shot, just to come out on the winning end of this one. I am so happy for Chris. This is something for the rest of his life that he ll be remembered by. He made an unbelievable play. Eastern Florida State men's basketball team advances to finals of NJKDI National Tournament. Hutchinson Kansas The Eastern Florida State College men's basketball team will be playing for a national championship for the first time in program history on Saturday night in Hutchinson, Kansas. The Titans used a 13-5 run in the final five minutes of the game to defeat South Plains 77-65 in the Njka Division I Men's Basketball National Championship semi-final and move into the final where they will face Hutchinson Community College who beat Northwest Florida State 88-79 in the first semi-final. This team this is a special group of people and I am just ridiculously happy and proud for each one of these guys and for our staff, Eastern Florida State College men's basketball coach Jeremy Schumann said. South Plains is an unbelievably talented ball club. They were number one in the country for 16 straight weeks for a reason, they are really fantastic. I am just so proud of the guys to have this opportunity to play for a national championship tomorrow. South Plains jumped out to a 5-0 lead but Austin Awad hit the first of his four three-pointers of the first half to get the Titans on the board. They would head to the locker room up 33-30. The shot felt good in the first half, I was just taking the looks they gave me honestly. In the second half they were in T helping off me at all and it opened up driving lanes for my teammates, comma said Awad who finished with 15 points. The second half was tight throughout as South Plains took the lead briefly at 49-48, but Awad hit two free throws to give the Titans the lead for good. In foul trouble most of the second half. Shaq Carter and Eli Abav came up big inside time after time as Carter finished with 13 points and 9 rebounds while Abav had 14 rebounds. As a team, the Titans out-rebounded South Plains 44-41 and outscored them 28-14 in the paint. We want to control our house, said Schumann who calls the paint his house. 
I thought we did a great job of that tonight. Kareem Bruton took over in the second half, scoring 19 of his team high 26 points in the second half for the Titans, who are now 31 5 on the season and heading to the championship game. 32 has a better ring to it, Awad said with a smile. They get the chance to win 32, but this could be the toughest challenge EFSC has faced in program history. Even though the game is technically being played on neutral floor, it's likely it won't feel that way as Hutchinson is the host team and plays their games where EFSC has now won twice to advance to the finals. The Blue Dragons lost on their home floor in last year's Sanjka finals to Salt Lake, 74-64. Hutchinson is led by one of the best players in all of college basketball, forward shocker Jewiston. Jewiston, 6'7", and 210 pounds is a sophomore and averaged a double-double per game this past season with 17 points and 12 rebounds per game. He is considering offers from major NCWDI schools such as Rutgers, St. Joe's, VCU. Utah, Kansas, Iowa State, UNLV, Rhode Island and Oklahoma. He will have two years of Division I eligibility wherever he lands next season. He will have two years of Division I eligibility wherever he lands next season. In the Blue Dragons' victory over Northwest Florida State, Juriston dominated with 18 points, 15 rebounds, 4 assists two blocks and a steal. The sixth-seeded Titans will have their hands full but as EFSC has shown, knocking off higher seeds is something a team must do if it wants to win a championship. EFSC knocked off the tournament's number two seed in South Plains to advance to the finals and now must take care of the third-seeded Blue Dragons who are now 36-2 on the season with both losses coming to conference foe, Coffeyville Community College. The game will be shown live on fsctetons.com web link. Many thanks for watching our channel video. If you see or click the subscribe button and share to support yourself offline. Thank you and see you in the next newsletter. Bye bye.